Yeah. Why? I think so. Let me two boogeymen. Hold on. For first of all, maybe one fucking all, wears the Freddy claws. The other one wears the Michael Myers mask in the face off. All right. First of all, um, the date I was I was told, which is totally far from un from official because the fight's not even been announced. The date I was told was October 29th, which is a Saturday, which is typically when we see fights, right? Mm -hmm. Bro, you don't want to go up against football it, on a Sunday? Hey, man, Bro. listen, that is the betting bookies. They probably got it wrong on the date. They never get it wrong on the line. I know I have gotten it wrong throughout the years. I've, I've told my audience about what guys. What do you mean they never get it wrong on the line? They usually don't get it wrong on the line. Not though. usually, yeah, but I'm saying... I mean, fucking Andy Ruiz, like you know, the 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 they get it Those wrong. Those are upsets, though. Yeah, no, for sure. When Holly Holm beat uh, Ronda Rousey, I know you don't watch UFC really quick. When Holly Holm beat Ronda Rousey, uh -huh. Caesars had to close the casino down for an hour because they didn't have enough money on the floor to pay out how much money they lost. All right, well, he killed my intro because I was trying to say I've introduced you guys to plenty of people, and sometimes I get it right. Sometimes I get it wrong. I want to hope I get it right more than often, and I feel that I've gotten it right with you. I'm going to call you Freddy because hey, it's Fredris, right? But it is Fredris. Freldis, but Oh, Freldis. Yeah. Hey, okay, no, I'm, no, hey, I'm Spanish. Right. I'm Spanish, yeah. so that's oh. nothing. That's nothing. I mean, usually Spanish people can't even say roll the R, so that was really oh, impressive. Oh, really? Yeah. So, but no, no Freldis. yeah. Freldis. It sounds, but you already told me you're half Mexican and Cuban. Cuban, yeah. Cuban yeah. name. Yeah, unique, Freddy's. you know. Unique. Uh, Rojas. Yeah. Yeah, Freddie, whole life. I always tell people to call me Freddie because mm -hmm. it makes it easier for them. And as a kid, everybody called my dad Freddie. So you said, I said, oh, you know what? Let me adopt that that name too. So Freddie's been since amateur till now. So you know, I was saying that you know, you. I think you're very good. Thank you, man. Like I lot. think that thank you, thank you, you know, in a few years. They'll see how good I think you are. <laughs> Thank you. I, you know, we 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 talked about. You know, we don't say any names, and uh, we try not to say too much. But we've seen you work. Thank you. With great names, yeah. and I'm super impressed. You know, so I am excited to introduce you to our audience, and uh, I'm just like waiting for Top Rank to give you some sort of television date so that the world can see what it is you can do. Mm -hmm. At first, I thought you had this amateur style because you move, but bro, you sit down. Yeah, and these guys respect you. Yeah. Um, how long have you been fighting? Fighting? Who? Uh, I've been fighting since I was 10? 10, 10 Well, no, 10. but you're only eighteen, right? Not eighteen. How old? I mean, are you? I was twenty-three. Oh, I got a baby face, but I okay. mean, okay. Uh, I've, I've been doing the sport for a while. Um, if I liked it in the beginning, no, I did not, but. Uh, when I was 14, that's when I really started having a passion for boxing. But I've been doing it for a long time. I mean, my dad was a pro boxer, and he fought back in Cuba in the amateurs. Okay. And he was on the uh, on the youth team and stuff, and elite team back in the day. So, and then my cousin Gamboa, and then Joel Casamayor. Yeah. No, no, yeah, no! Swear, you didn't man. tell me that. Yeah, you know, yeah. Gamboa is your cousin. Yeah, he's my primo, and then uh, Joel Casamayor is my primo too. So get the boxing, hell out of here. Boxing runs in our family. Oh my gosh! So you have pedigree. I didn't know that. Yeah, that makes. So. It makes sense now to see you move the way you move. Like, it makes sense. It's in yeah. your blood. That's crazy yeah. to have. That Cuban style has been installed. Uh, yeah, but, but no, 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 no. You don't, you don't have a Cuban style. Yeah, we try to. Uh, you, don't have a, you can box, box maybe yeah. like a Cuban, but you don't have the typical Cuban, Cuban style. style. Yeah, so. Well, try to say we grew up around that Cuban style. Yes. And the thing about boxing is hit and don't hit. hit. Of course, people would like to see knockouts and stuff like that, but I mean, kind of risk my life in there, you know. Mm-hmm. Trying to get somebody and get knocked out in the beginning, you know. But typically, that's what boxing is: hit and don't yeah. get hit. So wow, um, being related to Yurokis Gamboa and um, Yo Casamayor, Yo Casamayor, how'd uh, you end up being trained by K? Uh, I met K. And I always ruin his last name. Karoma. 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 Uh, I met K when I was fifteen when I first made the team. I was a little kid, and from there. Well, him and my dad met when they're in Spokane, uh, getting the for the coaching for amateurs. For those, that's how they met, because you know my dad's my first coach, and then K, he's there. But I met K and the team, and then from there, real, real good tight relationship. Uh, K's like my, oh, he's like my other father. Uh, he's taking care of me, so 
So when wow, I, when I other father. Up, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa. Since 15, well, that is a lot of years, yeah. man. So you guys have gone through some things. So those are huge words for him to yeah. be your other I mean, father. Uh, for Kay, uh, uh, he knows exactly how I fight style, just like how my dad does. You know what I mean? And my dad trusts him, and I trust Kay. Don't worry, Bo. Just go ahead in. We got to do some tightening here because I hate that you're bent over. It, oh, it's, it's the back one. Tighten that back arm for him, that nut right there. No, no, this one. Yeah. You got to lift it and then tighten it. Go up higher, please, and then it'll come down slightly. I mean, it's tight. Huh. I just, it, there you go. And turn this up so you don't have to keep bending over. There you All go. All right. Perfect. But Thank no, you, yeah, Case known me for a while now. I mean, shoot, since all the tournaments international, world champion at uh, the world championships in 2017 with Duke and Troy and all them, you know, he, he's known me for a while, so he knows my style. So my dad trusts him and I trust him. So does he just tell you to be remain patient um, because it's inevitable that you'll get a contract and you'll mm -hmm. be who you probably have dreamed about being? No. Or, uh, I mean, are you feeling some sort of urgency? I didn't know you were 23. You got no, that. You yeah. definitely got a baby face. Yeah, yeah. And I swore you told me you were 18, but I guess not. <laughs> no, no. Hey, what if I was somebody else? <laughs> no, 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 no. I ain't going to confuse you. Believe me. You nice. Uh, no, um, the opportunities are there to get with top rank or with matchroom and stuff. Um, I'm just on a different route sometimes. I mean, I won't say I don't want to. I want to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I just feel like I need a little bit more pro style, more sitting down, more relaxed, practice more things. And that's what we practice with my father. Oh, talk with my father and Kay. There's still stuff. I thought it was going to be an easy interact, uh, like transition from the amateurs to the pros. But it's crazy how much you got to settle down because imagine all these years on the amateurs, me pick fast pace, fast pace, mm -hmm. fast pace, and just to slow your feet down. That's a big transition. So... I, I like your feet though. That's oh, what's being you. like that's why they can't touch you. I feel as yeah. you you move, they can't keep up with your movement. Yeah. You know, you got insane stamina. Or, or, what what do you attribute that to? Is it like do you put in a lot of miles or is it just the, the fact that you spar so much you're comfortable? Like why do you think you're not tired in there? Foot drills, I'll say. Since a kid, my dad's always installed foot drills. Well, you know, that's a big major so what, thing like the, for Cubans. The, the agility ladder? No, not really ladder. Um, shoot, Cubans usually typically is just boxing position, move in, and then okay. like just turn in positions and stuff like that to get that right uh, feet placement and the things that, for example, my father be teaching, teaching you how they Cubans they install fighting you in both hands, mm -hmm. so balance could be in both sides. So my father, no, so fine. like if I step on one side, I'll be in battle. So like if I'm throwing a jab, and I throw like a hook coming to the left, I'm in position. I'm already in position. Uh, Turn and I'll be here. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So it's everything about feet placement, really. So I mean, being local to Vegas, did you ever train with uh, Ishmael Salas? I did. Uh, my my brother did more training with Ismael. Uh, I only did. I was always gone on the team with uh, uh, traveling and competing. So I only worked with Salas uh, probably a good two months. But that was great work. I still go to his gym down there to go spar with all his guys. Remember that. That Dominican Kai, remember you said you you, you wanted to see yeah you wanted to see me and him spar and we sparred real great sparring when we went down to like fireworks and you know how Cubans are sometimes there'd be a lot of talking hey man and so, I don't know if you ever wait been to wait gym. you talking about Arthur the Dominican the one that was four, 54, 47? Oh, yeah yeah Carlos Carlos yeah. so over there you know how sometimes gyms get they get all rowdy and stuff so no it was fun it was really great great sparring mm. I like getting sparring with the best and I want to fight the best you know. I'm just coming up and I'm hungry, so um, yeah, I'm just ready. Yo, I, you, I mean, you be seeing some. They be throwing me in with the big boys. I mean, I got Hell the hype. Yeah. Be throwing with the big boys, but then that's how you learn, also. So you know, learn how to, for me to sit nah, down and punch. That you know, Ukrainian punch. dude isn't he like 68? Yeah, bro, you're so, 47. Yeah, man. So, so what are you right now? Because 47 is only on fight day. Fight, yeah, 47 is only on fight day. Waiting, waiting. When I walk around, I walk around like 160, 158. Okay, so, so it's not that much. Not that bad. Probably uh, 11, 12 pounds overweight usually. But, I mean, I, at the amateurs, I fought at 152. That's what I was an Olympic alternate, you know? Mm -hmm. What's the point of me fighting 54 if I can go down to 47 and just get these smaller guys and, you know, Absolutely. handle some work? Because when I first met you, I thought you were a 54-pounder. Yeah, because you saw me sparring with the one dude over there, 54. With a few 54-pounders. I mean, what is the... 
the um, Jorge Capotillo's fighter, the Mexican one. Which one? You got a lot. <laughs> Diamante. Tall he just kid, started coming around. Kid. He just started coming around Light on skin. sparring days. He's like really white. Looks like Canelo. I don't think Looks so. Like Canelo? But no, I don't think so. He's got the 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 the, the he's ginger got the, hair. He's got the no, he he's got had, the blonde hair, and then he's got fucking blue eyes. Yeah, it's light brown hair. Okay, but my man hating because Canelo's his favorite fighter. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I'm just saying, like, because he's probably gonna be expecting freckles and red hair, and uh, you're right, I guess. You know, that's, but you haven't seen him. No, get out of here. I'm not, he's been going over there to top yeah. rank. Yeah. yeah, but he's only gone like maybe three times. I feel like three times in a row, at least. I don't know. I probably have I didn't seen see him, him yesterday though. But I left early yesterday. Yeah. Freaking guy couldn't take the heat. You yeah. don't have to buy a fan, man. Jose. Almost ah, that no. ain't gonna help. <laughs> <laughs> he said Jose. You know how many Latinos name Jose? <laughs> nah, it can't be Rocha. I don't remember Rocha. But uh, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I didn't know I said Adamus. I didn't want, I, I don't think it was Adamus. I said, I want to see you with Puello. Mm -hmm. Arthur Puello, the 140 pounder that he was sparring Yelousinov. He only went there once so far. He oh, that's the one he did. Uh, uh, he did like four rounds with him, right? Or six? Mm -hmm. No, yeah, that's that's who I sparred in Solace Gym. At Solace, yeah. that's what I'm saying. saying I oh, you wanted to, to see it. No, yeah, that was if you if you were there at Solace, you can even ask K. That was some really really great work, man. You know, there was a lot of Bro, you know he's number 1 in the WBA. Yeah, he, he's really good, man. Yeah. And and the, the, oh, yeah, the BA, the mm -hmm. BA. And the thing about top level sparring, it makes you think. So you always got to be, you know, mm -hmm. alerted and stuff. So to me, I well, in my experience, it brings out the better of you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, being with K, uh, and obviously, I'm sure you've gone to Colorado. Have you ever got the chance to cross with Bud and spar with Bud? Uh, no, I be I did go to Bud's gym. I was helping Robert Brandt for oh, that okay. one last That's fight that he boy. had. I was his sparring partner for that fight. All right. Uh, so big, a uh, Bo Mac, Red, and all them. I love all them. I mean, I've been around them since 18, since I yeah. first made the team over there as elite. So I've been around them all the time. Uh, real great work. Seeing Bud in the ring, man, it's it's, it's really good, man. He, he he he's smart as the way he, as the rounds go by. You know what I mean? Really smart, smart guy. Mm. Julio Porras. Porra. Oh, you text Jorge? No, nah, Frank texted me. Shout out to Frank. He's tuned in. Ah, shout hey, out Frank. to Frank. <laughs> so, hey, Frank. Uh, shout out to Frank. Yeah. So the the guy's name is Julio Porras. Yeah, he's like 6 and 0, 6 KOs. All his fights are in Mexico. He still mm -hmm. needs some work. He's not you. He don't got that tank. He just mm -hmm. learned. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit, I'm in America. These dudes spar different. <laughs> I was talking to him. He's like, yo, it's different over here. I'm wondering who you talking about. Like, He's this tall, good looking Mexican. That tall, the one that be sparring with Troy? That yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. No, you asked, I've never worked with him. Yeah, but uh, I think that'd be great, great sparring if I worked with him. I don't know. I think you're too fat. I think he got to He got to He got to He got to get the word. He got to. Yeah. He's new. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? You're used to sparring, like you said, elite and just Americans. Mm -hmm. It's different, man. I, I feel like he's, out uh, there. He's five and zero oh with four KOs. Oh, I was wrong by one. I try to pull up. That's probably he's twenty. That's probably who you was thinking of was young. Mm. But uh, he's such a nice guy, but he gotta he gotta get that tank right, man, because he got a good jab. Yeah, it he got just, the height. He got the height. He just he doesn't does. keep throwing keep it. You up. gotta be Devin Haney with that motherfucker. Hey, keep Devin, like you Devin, be jabbing, yeah. you jab, and I think that's what sets everything up for you, man. Yeah, You're of course. Very good, very good. A boxer I, without I can't a jab ain't a boxer. You. I like to say that yeah, sets, that's right. That sets up everything. He he loves to say that all phrases in life are true, and. They say that a jab takes you around, around the, the world. world, baby. And I hey, said it, it literally. I'm gonna start stealing that now. <laughs> I, I said it literally took Devin to Australia and back mm -hmm. because I mean he won that fight with no, the but, jab. No, yeah. but but literally for him around the world because remember he, his first stop was Mexico. Yeah, he started you know? in Mexico. And who knows the international fights that he had as an amateur because you know he was supposed to be in that Olympic class with everyone else, but he was mm -hmm. a year younger. He went, yeah. I, I Devin's gym. Was the second gym I started when he had Hip Factor over there by the mm -hmm. Stratosphere mm -hmm. by Sahara? That I started off as a gym. I well, technically I started representing his gym when I was fighting when I first started boxing because me and him and my brother 
since we were little, oh, we we uh, we've been sparring him since kids. So mm-hmm. Devin's a real, real talented fighter. Oh, you fighter. sparred him? Yeah. Well, since kids, man. I mean, now, now recently because I moved down to Houston and everything. So uh, you haven't sparred him since being a teenager. About a uh, young teenager, I haven't sparred Devin since I was a young mm-hmm. te- teenager. But um, much respect. Uh, me and uh, Devin were on the team together when we were fourteen it's on on Team USA. So. Devin's a great fighter. I'm real proud of him. You're Southpaw, though, right? Southpaw, yeah. Yeah. But, and yeah, always great work. Devin. Was, oh, yeah. But now you're too tall. Like, uh, Tank would be the Southpaw that Devin would have to fight, but you would be too tall to help him. Yeah, I'll be. I'm 6'2. And uh, how tall insane, is Devin? That's insane, bro. 6'2 yeah. <laughs> at a welterweight. I used to think Mario Barrios was tall when I first met him, and mm-hmm. he was at 122. You're so huge. That's why, like, if you can stay at that weight, oh my god! Yeah, so you're bigger than Jamal James, like, you're bigger than Paul Williams. Really? Bro, Paul Williams was a six one, I, six one, right? Look him up, bro. Like, I don't think there's ever been a welterweight six two. Mm. Like, they got they got to see the marketing power in that man. Then you're Cuban. No, nah, what, what about what uh, about? Uh, Darrell's nephew isn't he a Walt? Wasn't Ooh Lawson? No, ain't he fifty four? Let me see. Let me see. You talking about Leon Lawson the third? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Paul be- Williams was six one. Yeah, I was right. Telling you, bro, six yeah. two, bro. That's a mark. Like top rank when they finally sign, they're gonna see that's marketing right there. Mm-hmm. Six two welterweight. Like, look what they did with with, with uh, Sebastian Fondora. Oh, he's so tall, so they called him the Burning Inferno, okay. and now yeah, he's six his- five. You right, he's. 54, but he's 6'5. Yeah, but he's 54. Yeah, he's 54. No that's one. That's still, that's still. Oh, uh, wait, man. No for that one at, at, at welterweight has been this big. Like, that's crazy. And and again, I thought you were a 54 because you don't even. Have you been in? Oh, I guess you've, you've definitely. I've definitely seen you spar Yelenusinov, the IBO champion. Mm-hmm. From, mm-hmm. He's real great work. Real he's good work. pretty fast. Mm-hmm. Um, I was asking someone else if they felt like he. Is more accuracy or activity? I think he's activity, but who were we interviewing? He was like, no, that uh, he's just very accurate, and he and he doesn't waste shots. Who we was just it? had someone yeah. here two, three days ago, no later. I'll, I'll kind of agree with that. Oh yeah, but I feel like he's more. Uh, I feel like fast pace. Go. Yeah, I, feel I like think he that's lets what. Hands and you go. know, in the, in the pros. Sometimes, you know, people are slower paced and stuff like that. So we'd be catching everybody. So the thing with what I learned sparring with him is you always got to be throwing in between, even if you're just flicking the jab, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? To keep him guessing. Because if you're standing there in front of him, pa, 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 he can turn, pa, 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 he can turn to pa, pa, pa. Because he's real quick. He got that real, uh, I could say, amateur or Kazakhstan style, always throwing punches and jumping in and out, in and out, in and out. So I do agree with you in that point that he's the activity when he, during the fight or during the rounds, he's that real kid, on there. He's, he's sharp, man. He yeah. don't even have a fight, too. That dedication. I can't believe Matchroom let him go uh, because he doesn't have a fight. He spars like every day. Yeah. He's always sparring. Mm-hmm. I even seen him sparring off days. Like, my man is a machine. I can't believe it. Oh, I'm about to name you a welterweight champ, 6'2". Who? Mm-hmm. Mark Breland. Okay. Mark Breland. Wow, that's that's false. Come on, man. You know I know Mark, and I get it. He's older now, so you start to shrink and and hover over. But Mark ain't no fucking six two. No way, no way. I spent hella camps with Mark and in Gleason's. I I don't I don't see six two again. You know you old, you start to crouch over. Crouch so it, who yeah. fucking knows? But. Start shrinking. <laughs> For <laughs> real. So Boxrec got him listed at six two. You Google him, he pop up six three. Wow. So, yeah, I guess it's just old age, you know? You start curving no, over. And, and, and you know what? Let me tell you something. Um, Bro, because I, I got swear, a picture. I'm 5'10". Wanna... I'm 5'10", right? Mm-hmm. I got a picture with Wilder, and we're like this. And to this day, I look at that picture, and I'm like, what the fuck? And it's like, I've been around Wilder other times, and it's not like that, mm-hmm. you yeah. know? But sometimes people crouch over, and, you know? And like you said, especially Mark, who is now 59 years old. Yeah. Shout out to Mark, man. Always was a true gentleman and amazing person to me. Gave me fantastic interviews out there in uh, Alabama th- throughout those camps that I was allowed to go to. He's a, he's a pretty good guy. He's just such a whisperer, man. Say like, no, you know, he's got he's to shoot the jam, man. 
the top of the jam is coming out with my pipe with the right hand. Like, Mark, man, speak up. <laughs> speak up. But uh, let me see. I know we got some questions. Brandon, can you make sure I have the post, which you've already done? So, Freddie, we got uh, our most loyal listeners that we allow to ask you questions. Yes, First one's sorry. coming from New Orleans. Ruin of 504 says, What's your plan? What plans does your team have for you to stay busy for the rest of 2022? You have a fight, actually. Yeah, next week. Back oh, in wow. Costa Rica with Pro Bellum. So. Oh, wow. I didn't know yeah. it was Pro, 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 yeah. Pro Bellum. Yeah, so my last three fights were with them. That's uh, so crazy. I remember you telling me Costa Rica, and I just was like, oh, they're, they're keeping them busy. I yeah. had no clue it was on a Pro Bellum card. Yeah, yeah. So that's the next fight there on the 17th next week, Friday. So, you know. It's uh, funny. A lot of people have been having fights in Costa Rica recently. Yeah. Good fights. It's yeah. a real what beautiful you, city. What I was just gonna ask, uh, what was your I've experience? Never been. What was your experience? Really beautiful. Like? The people are amazing. I mean, I I've taken them. Out. I think the people love me down there. Always a great crowd. Always welcoming. Great place to lose weight. My gosh, the you need humidity? to lose, shed some pounds. That's a great place to lose it because yeah, the humidity just sheds everything off. That's why I kind of. That's why I like Houston more than uh, Vegas weather because I you sweat. Yeah, I just be. Drench, it's like if I just took a shower. The I actually time, like this more than I lived in Florida for a year. Um, oh, you like that dry heat? You like I like this heat? because you don't sweat. I but hate, I hate so this. as a boxer, boxer, yeah, yeah. boxer's perspective. No, I know. Let me tell you, first, first time I went to Houston was for a Charlo fight. I land at like six in the morning, mm -hmm. so I'm waiting on my airport. It's like six thirty. I got my bag. I'm I'm waiting on the Uber. It's five minutes away, but I couldn't wait. I had to go in my bag get a towel because I was I was sweating that much, yeah. and it's like six thirty in the morning. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, it gets humid down there for sure, yeah. for sure. Yep, yep, yep. Um, he's actually right. I I forgot I was talking uh yelling Newsom off about that fight. Ivan Globa. I've watched him fight. I believe. He fought on the Buxino tournament, I think. Mm. He's a 54-pounder. He might have beat John Thompson. I so mean, he dropped? If he if he fight in... He probably went up. Or down. Yeah, you're right. Down. Okay. I feel like he beat John Thompson in the Buxino tournament. Just look him up because I already got Freddie's uh, post pulled up. I got James Valdez in San Antonio, Texas that says, if the Conor Ben versus Virgil Ortiz fight happens, who wins and how... And can the winner compete against Boots? Mm. So they're asking who's gonna who will win who between Virgil win between Virgil and Connor Ben, and does the winner have a chance against Boots? I feel like Virgil will win that because I fought Virgil in the amateurs, but now he's Virgil does hit hard. Um. Let's say Virgil fights Boots. I think Boots will take it all the way. Uh, Virgil don't do too good with boxers. Mm. But my whole respect to Virgil, he, you're a real great fighter. So so how'd that fight with you and him go? You can't just say you fought him. and don't No, no, I happened. lost. I lost. It was a 3-2. I thought it was at Golden Gloves uh, semifinals. I thought he didn't touch me at all, the whole thing. I thought we won the fight and everything. But usually Golden Gloves will look for more brawls than boxing. So uh, he took it. Hey. Learning uh, that was a learning day for me. So yeah. So what is your thoughts on Boots, man? Boots is a great fighter, man. You've met him? No, I've never met him. I've never worked with him or anything. But the fights that I've seen, he's a real great top fighter at 147. I want to fight him one day. Mm. Um, that'll be a great fight, or uh, even to get some sp some work with him. It'll be it'll, it'll be a privilege and an honor to work with him, man. Do you feel that the winner of Crawford and Spence should give? Boots, boots or but, Virgil shot before moving up or before? I feel like they should give Boots more of the chance. I think Boots is a more skillful fighter than uh, Virgil. Um, and the Crawford with Spence, I go. I, I had to go with Bud all the way. I don't. But you never been in the gym with Earl being in Houston now? No, no, I know no, Houston never, he's and from Dallas, Dallas are completely yeah. far, you know. Four three hours. hours three, oh, three, three hours of diff uh, difference from each other. But uh, no, I've, I've never been in person with uh, seen. Or been in person with uh Yo, they Earl, got Frank but, Martin over there. I'm sure they'll yeah. open a door. I fought Frank Martin in uh 2016. Uh oh. Uh Nationals, the first time I was you got 18. Him? You got him? Yeah, one that, that was that's when I went to the elites. I and that was funny thing because we are youth world championships. K was there. 
uh, Youth World Championships. And we came back home, and there was a week break, basically, before National started. And that was 17, just turning 18 to go with the big boys, you know, 18 through 40. And I told my dad, I'm like, I ain't going to go. I need a break from boxing because I I didn't have a break for a while. But then somehow, like, on a Thursday, like, two days before we they had to leave, before Tony started, I told my dad, you know what? Let's just go. You know, you stay a little active. After this, I'll take a break. And go there, fought six days straight. Beat all these grown men, man, and then I fought Frank Martin that day, and I won. So that was a real good day for me. And so that was the first fight? time fighting without headgear. Me and Frank on the finals. Oh wow, you had to fight him without headgear. Yeah. So that tournament. Eight ounces or tens? No, it was tens. It, it was weird though because the whole tournament from the oh, first tens fi- because you're fifty two. Uh no, no amateurs, amateurs tens. A- amateurs oh, okay. tens. When you go to fit, when you're fifty two, goes to twelve ounces. Okay. But yeah. You gotta. I'm. 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 I'm sorry to be the one to tell you this, but you have to use that to yeah. your advantage. Frank Martin is hot right now. He's yeah. in the Earl Spence gym. He's trained by Derek James. He's mm-hmm. getting these PBC fights. You know, um, people should know. You know, yeah. you got to start pushing yourself, so, man. Because yeah. you're, you're. You're. I mean, uh, again, maybe not. K is a very quiet person. Is probably, you know, uh, your guys' plan to go. Under the radar, but I think that you know people need to know about no, you. Yeah. Very good no, and I'm ready for the step. Yeah, I'm ready for the step. Uh, if the shots there and the team things are ready, I'm ready. I mean, I've been ready since <laughs> since yeah, coming out of the amateurs. Mm-hmm. I've been ready. Um, so, so now it's just making the move. Who? You, no, your father is Cuban. Yeah, your mother. Right, that's is my Mexican. Haircut. My mother's Mexican. Okay. But I speak yeah. more Cuban than anything when I speak in Spanish. So. It, sh- it would be the man, though, because the, the you know, Caribbean men, you know? <laughs> he, he, he probably I don't did. know. Oh, I don't know. My mom's... My you mom. think it was your mom that hit on your dad? No, no. It was definitely my dad that yeah, hit on my mom. But definitely. my mom acts more Cuban than my dad. It kind of turns the opposite now. My dad's oh. turning more Mexican and my mom's the more Cuban, uh, more Cuban They're now. They're still together? Yeah, still oh, together. Oh, God so bless. That's, man, yeah, that's they, beautiful. They've been together... Shoot. I think my dad and them, they've known each other since they were 16, 17. That's amazing. That's my mom and my yeah. father. Still my mom had me when she was 18. That's so. beautiful, man. Congrats. That's Thank good. You, Not everybody uh, has the pleasure of being raised by both their parents. Yeah, so. So, and great support, man. And there are, I know a lot of people in boxing or even sports in general that don't have yeah. their, their family supporting them. And I'm thankful to God that he... He had my family throughout my whole career has always supported me, and I got that. We seen him in the crowds and everything. So, so how did you get? How long ago did your dad get here? And and oh, no, he or got, was he born here? No, no, he was born in Cuba. He left Cuba. He swam from Cuba here. Swam. Yeah, with him, I think, and five other five other guys, six. Oh my god! Could be wrong. Oh my god! Let me find out. He swam over here with Roly's dad. Roly was <laughs> Roly's dad was just telling me he swam over here with yeah. five other guys, but one didn't make it. Hey, I think my dad said one didn't make it. Holy shit! But I don't, shit. I don't, hey, look, I don't bro, know. If you I don't know if they're to be, together. If bro. this guy happened to be Yurokis Gamboa's cousin, related to fucking uh, Yo, oh, God, my and Roly's father's father swam. I mean, your father and Roly's father swam over here together. Right. That'd be a small world. It'd be crazy. A little too bro. many coincidences going on, bro. Right <laughs> we gonna have to put all our money on you, man. That's too many fucking things lining up. Uh, That's crazy. Yeah. So. No, nah, it was actually a funny story how I started boxing. How? Because I was in the living room. I think me and my brother were about like uh, eight or nine. Mm. And uh, my dad, he came. We were living in a small apartment by Sahara and Ellis. And we were sitting down and just watching TV. Is, and my dad's like, you guys want to go to the store? And, you know, as a kid, you're like, yeah, candy. I'm going to get some chips or something, you know? So we go on my and my dad's like, all right, go in the car. And we saw my dad have a gym bag. But, you know, we didn't really think about it. My dad, my dad was boxing at the time. Mm-hmm. So I was like, uh, he put that gym bag in the car. We I get in the car. And notice the grocery store. Back in the day, they had a store called Food for Less. Back, and that was like at the corner of my uh that was like in the corner of my house. Mm-hmm. Right down the street. My dad passes it. Mm. I was like, huh? Passes three more. Going. I'm like, eh, maybe he's gonna go to the gym and he's gonna, you know. And then we'll go afterwards. No, I don't know. I don't know if you guys know about uh, Johnny Tacos. Yeah, hey, I sparred there before. Th- that's where I started off, and um, he threw. He just left me there for three hours with some coach. Mm. I cried. Well, he just threw me. Boop. And God. walked away. Bye. Yeah. Damn. And I ain't gonna lie to you. I cried the whole time. You can ask my brother. How, my eight, brother's here. Eight? Yeah, eight and nine. I cried the whole time. At that time, I had, I was a real quiet kid back in the time. Real quiet, sensitive, big old mama's boy. 
I didn't. I cried throughout the whole thing. My dad came. He said, you like boxing? You love it? You love it? And for me, not to hurt my dad's feelings, I'm like, oh, yeah, I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and from the age from 8 to 14, I absolutely hated boxing. I did not want to know anything of it. When oh, it was my a, God. It was a chore. My dad, I remember I used to go to my mom, like, please, I don't want to go. I used to cry my mom, this and this. And so, you know, I said, mom, no mom want to see their kid get punched. She's like, no, 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 don't let him go, this and this. But I'm glad my dad always pushed me and stuff like that. But when I first made the team when I was 14 as a junior, that's when I absolutely fell in love with boxing. Uh, going overseas, seeing all these different countries, getting gear and all that stuff. So I was <laughs> just like, gear. yeah, I was like, you know what? This, this, I, this is, I think this could be for me. I, I think I got a feature for this. And, you know, all these fights have been pretty good in the amateur. So that's really what stuck out to me. But that story, man, when every time, every, everybody always thinks I fell in love with boxing in the beginning. Now it was, it was hard in the beginning because in the beginning I did not like it at you know, all. I'm glad you said, I'm glad you said that. And I'm glad that it just so happens. This is your story because we've been getting a lot of amateur fighters and, and young amateur fighters. Yeah. We've been having and, nine and, year olds come in with their mm -hmm. father and it's like, do you really love boxing? Yeah, I love it. But it's like, you know, come back when you're 15, see if yeah. you still nope. love it or hey. are you doing it because you're. Trying to make, you make your father, father happy. happy. Yeah. And I ain't gonna lie, when people ask me that, yeah, I got interviews like that when I was on Team USA when I was younger, and I'd be like, oh, yeah, I love it. <laughs> Back in my head, I was like, oh, man, if they know. Because, <laughs> you know, as a father, yeah. as a uh, as a father, uh, when you have a father as your coach, I think those are the ones, because they know when you when you lying, when mm -hmm. you're actually trying, when you're tired, when you're, you know, so you can't hide nothing from your father. So the whole time, I couldn't get away with it anything if my dad my dad's the type of person he'll train you for fun he bored he better let's go I'll be like, <laughs> <laughs> so I, so growing up as a kid we always train like three or four times a day sometimes because he'd be bored mm, we'd be wow. sitting at the house we just finished training and sitting down he'd be like you know what let's go let's go i'm like where are we going we're gonna go run uh like six miles right now i'm like dang dad <laughs> <laughs> but if it wasn't for that for my dad doing you that probably i wouldn't have be i wouldn't have the pedigree i have now yeah. olympic alternate being on the team for all these years and the pro that I am now. So I, my dad really, I give him the the biggest thanks to him. So well, how many miles? I'm sorry, go. No, I wanted to ask you, what was it like when you finally told your dad? Like, how old were you, and what was it like telling your dad? Like, you know, when when I started this shit, I hated it, right? <laughs> he said he knew. He's like, I knew. Oh wow. He said I knew. I knew the whole time. <laughs> he's like, I just, I, you know, he's like, I just had to push you through it. And you know what's funny? My dad, he let me get a job at Starbucks when I was 15 through 18, my whole high school career. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he told me this afterwards. He The reason he did that is he let me have the, the uh, that job while going to school and everything so I can get that mentality. He says, I don't want to work for somebody my whole life. You know what I mean? I used to work two weeks, 40 hours. My check used to come only $200 <laughs> at Starbucks. That's what, you know, minimum wage and everything. I looked at it when I first checked. I said, hold up. <laughs> Working like a slave, <laughs> two weeks, two weeks, just to get a two hundred dollar check. I was like, "This is not for me, man. Yeah. <laughs> I I can't do this." Yeah, I punch hey, much respect to other people. Baby. Yeah, much respect to other people who like to work and stuff. Like that, but I'd rather be my own boss. But tell people to do. Don't than, get it confused. You're working more than the Starbucks guy. It just it's gonna pay off for you if you remain yeah, but, disciplined. But I love not what I do. Yeah remains disciplined mm -hmm. and that's what that's the beauty and the advantage that you have you love what you do like for me i love what i do yesterday we had Devin in here that was un saw. that was unplanned so we worked the extra three hours that it didn't fucking bother me it's mm -hmm. Devin haney like yeah. my job is to interview you like you think i'm this is work for me no yeah. i love that i got to see you and tell my no, audience all about but, you but all, all that shit's important bro because it's true because although you're boxing yo my dad from the age of like 12 he didn't believe in child labor laws bro he had a <laughs> he had a landscaping company and bro like the typical mexican yeah we I don't know what's grass. up with these dads man no let me tell no, you that, me that, tell that you. helps you in bro, the future believe you know me. i left the, i left the house when i was 17 i've been living on my own since and it's because my dad told me i was just telling him bro like we work 14 15 hour days but it's not work and for me it's like I'm trying to work, work as much as possible because that's what I was taught is to work. And I'm mm -hmm. like, bro, I'd rather do this than cut grass. I hear a lawnmower and it's like I get PTSD. <laughs> yeah, trauma, yeah. Bro, it traumatizes me. Yeah. I hear a lawnmower, a weed whack. I'm like, Look, it, I, I, duck, I, I duck like they shooting this no, shit. No, I'm definitely <laughs> traumatized with uh, weed whackers, man. I was in L.A. 
Um, I w- Benavidez was training in San Diego, and I went to see him uh, spar and stuff. Bro, in a, in, a, in, a, in a landscaper drops his weed whacker on the highway. A, a Jeep like the one you wants to buy hits it. Bro, the weed whacker is just coming at me, <laughs> Final Destination style. Oh, shit. Boom, hits the new rental. Oh, it, you hit it? Bro, you know the little bar where the... So yeah. this is the windshield. So that bar, luckily it hit that because if it hits that windshield, we're dead uh. because that's going to shatter. I'm going to go panic and it was LA traffic. Bro, crazy. I'm I'm traumatized. I don't want to see weed whackers ever. That's Shit me with crazy. the uh, concrete barrels. Uh, the barrels, you know, when they put the concrete and you mm-hmm. got them. The wheelbarrows, yeah. yeah. Oh, my. You know, I'm a skinny guy. When I was a kid, I was extra skinny. <laughs> you can't keep that wheelbarrow no, that balance. Man, let me tell you I was something. Shaking and everything like this, something. trying to go. The wheelbarrow, bro, we used to carry that bitch so heavy, just everything. Calluses. Like calluses mm. on my hand. My hand's all cut up, man. Now I go get mad. But, but it's like you shit. said, you know, that work made you realize that's hard work. Mm-hmm. This hard work is hard work that you love. And if you could just keep that, you're going to be good because, you know, I want to go back to the stamina anyway because that's what I was going to say. Mm-hmm. If you could just keep that, you're going to be good. But at the end of the day, it's stamina. You can have all the skills in the world, but I feel like someone that can outwork you will be the better fighter because, mm-hmm. you know, they just have more activity. They're not tired. Like, for instance, I don't know if you were paying attention yesterday to the early spawn. You seen that. Which one? Which one? I uh, yeah, can't say. <laughs> if you ain't see it, you ain't see Be- it. Before me? Uh, definitely before you. The one you. before me? Definitely before I think you. I came in the last someone was two just, rounds. Someone was just not on the other person's level, but obviously that person is working. He's running or doing uh, something. I think I know what you're talking and, about. And, uh, you know, he did very well. Mm-hmm. He did very well. And his trainer was very happy because... You know, the record doesn't indicate what he did in that ring. And, uh, and, and that that comes from having that stamina. Now so I, know you're so about. I get back to to you. How many do is it miles that you run miles, or is it yeah. rounds that you put in? What do you think what do you attribute the stamina to? Because I, I feel like you don't get tired. Both. Uh that's something big my dad always said, if you're gonna be a boxer and you're gonna move, you gotta have the stamina in your legs to move. So I, I I'll say both. My dad, when I'm back at home, uh, we got our own gym down there in Houston, uh, zero to hundred boxing club, and um, usually for every time I look, I train three times a day, and sometimes I train the kids over there too, and I train with them every workout. So, uh, I would roughly be running six to eight when I'm there with my dad. Right when I'm here with Kay, wow, six to eight, eight miles. Yeah. With here with K, we, Bro, it's about no, the same thing. We go up there in Mount Charleston Mount with everybody. Charles. But you know. is there no concern of of uh, overworking the legs or or I don't know, fucking hurting your your knees and joints? That's eight miles in yeah, one I mean, run. That's always gonna happen. I mean, I got flat feet, so my ankles are always hurting. But um, we do that every other day, so there's breaks I, in between. I you think, know what I mean? I think it's all about the recovery. So every other day, what are you doing? Three in a week? Or three or runs? Four? Yeah, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So on sparring, sparring days. days, yeah, sparring days. So basically, basically, it's, it's real good to do strength and conditioning on those days too, on the sparring days, because they those yeah, days. Canelo I think, does that, yeah, because those days are already the heart. You working hard. He actually does it the opposite, which was crazy. He he does runs and strength and conditioning before sparring, sparring. to like um, simulate being exhausted Busted. in the ring, so he could push. That's some crazy shit. Mm. No, nah, yeah, but yeah, my strength coach, uh, uh, Evans. Evans Tober, he's a great strength coach. I'm being, I've been working with him. Who's he him. worked with? Any, uh, he'd be working with Regis. Regis? Got, uh, Regis, and then he got, uh, uh, he's training, working with Jenny. Is Pierce. it the new guy that Regis got? Because remember, Regis got a new guy that he was very happy with and making, you know, posts about. Because remember, Regis was struggling to make weight. Now he's good at 40. You talking about pro grade, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Evan you, Tobler, yeah. I, he's been working. I don't know with him, if so. it's okay. That's uh, a, that's a, that's who Regis is working with now. Yeah, as a strength coach, uh, he's real, real great strength coach. I'll shout out to him. Um, you make sure you in, in condition too. Trust me, uh, that boy he be trying to trying to kill me in, uh, swimming in them running days. So mm. I love the swimming days though. I ain't not gonna lie; those days are the fun. My brother says otherwise. He's like, he made me hate swimming. <laughs> Austin, put the name on the screen. We got people asking in the chat. Let me see what else um, we have here. But it is Freddy Rojas, more like Fred. What? Freudis. 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 Yeah. Oh, that is so Dominican, it sounds. <laughs> Not Cuban. Um, the, we have Anaudis. 
uh, L these. You know the it, the end here in the U.S. When my dad came, they spelled it wrong. They put uh, F R E U D I S. It's mm-hmm. supposed to be wife. You know, as Cubans always end the E's in the end. Freddy's, mm-hmm. ladies, ladies, Maria. You know, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Freddy's as my uncle's name. So it's literally, I don't know what it is with Cuban with the E's in there. No, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I have Alejandro Corona that says from San Antonio, Texas. What weight division do you see yourself finishing your career at? Thanks. Shit, you could Ooh. probably be like seventy five. No. Yeah, I mean, I do plan to do boxing for a while, you know. It would be great if I could do that, you know, go up to 75. I mean, I mean I'm still young. I'm still growing. So I still need to. That's fi- four divisions. Mm, yeah. Still some filling in. Nah, I'll probably see myself probably in the high 60s if I don't make it in the 75s or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, yeah. I, I definitely don't see myself at 147 forever. Like I said, I'm still growing. I'm still young. Um. Being at that top rank gym so much, did you have an opportunity to see Devin before he went to Australia? No. No? He, I, he actually, Devin, I left the day before Devin got there. Oh. So I was like, dang. Because I was there when Shakur was having his training camp. We were mm-hmm. all there having our training camp at the same time. So I was there when Core was there. But literally the day after I left, that's when Devin, he showed up to the gym. And I said, dang, what's the coincidence? Um, You've ever sparred with Kenneth Sims? With Kenny? Love Kenny. Kenny, my boy. Yeah, of course you spar with Kenny. Really? Uh, over there with Jay Prince uh, in Houston. Okay, I've known Kenny. Look, but in top rank gym. No, and I didn't. I didn't spar with top rank or uh, Kenny in top rank. We were we're all the same team. No, so, I know, but he's different now, isn't he? No, yeah, that Kenny now, one hundred percent better. Exactly. Way better. That's why I'm actually have you spar at the top rank gym. No, with I this version Kenny. of Kenny. No, uh, with Kenny we sparred together all the time. Look, I'm telling you right now, Kenny is going to be a phenomenal fighter. He's going to be one of the top dogs out there. Kenny is just a great fighter. He's one of my bestest friends, real close to him. Like I said, I've known Kenny since I was when I was 14. We were on the same team together, but he didn't know. He didn't know me until fast forward four or five years later when we saw each other again at Olympic Training Center. And we came down to uh, uh, down there to give us some sparring. Mm. Uh, but no, Kenny's a really great fighter. My respect, and now with this. His future, I used to see it, bro. He gets better and better every time I see him. So I think it's a good environment training with the best like that. You know, having everybody have that same motive, the same drive as you, and it pushes you more to work the best. So, mm. Absolutely. Um, I know this is another smaller person, but, you know, sometimes people spar up. Arnold Barboza. Barboza. Because he's there in that gym a lot. No, if you don't know him, you didn't. I gotta see. I'm really this bad with names. I gotta see camp, his face. To be fair, this is his first is camp his first at camp. the top ranked gym. So you may have not seen him um, yet because I think I've seen that they maybe come in either really early or towards the end of the sparring. What day. about Mendoza? Brian. I want to spar with Mendoza. I oh, saw, but you Troy, haven't? I haven't. Uh, Troy, I think Troy, uh, Troy yeah, I just yeah, sparred Troy with him did, yesterday. Yeah, right? he just did. I mean, yeah. this guy, we got to get it. We're going to stop and get a fan <laughs> before next sparring session because. No, yesterday was like hotter than usual, though. Yeah, there was, good, like, there was a lot of good work yesterday. No, it was hot. It was hot. But I wanted to stay there. I wanted to. I told him. I, I, Why'd you guys was, leave? He was too hot. I, huh? No, no, no. I told him. He was going to catch an Uber. He yeah. told me, yo, I'm going to catch. I'm, I'm your friend. I'm not going to. But, but yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I no, wanted to stay. There but, was some shit that was going to go down. It, was, but, it wasn't that packed, but it was some specific, some specific, specific spawn, spawn I wanted to see. What's man. today? Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday. What? And Bones brought his fighters. I wanted oh, to yeah, see Bones how good. I wanted to see how good my little man does, man. Did. Anyway. Sean? Yes. He Sean's did. a great fighter too. I know, yeah, but good fighter too. I want to see because I, you know, seeing some stuff. So I want to <laughs> see is he working on some stuff? Yo, I love being out here. Let me tell you, I'm, I'm just very thankful to God that I'm in, in Vegas. I never knew it would be this much better for the show. I love being able to go see you guys. I love being able to, you know, again tell my audience about someone new and and have them see what it is that I see in you. So. Uh, you, very appreciative to you coming into studio. Appreciate I got you New family. York Bullet that says, what's up, champ? If you had the choice of fighting Crawford or Spence, who would you take? Bud. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Bud, 100%. Because I feel like I'll get more work with Bud. Wow. He's what such, do you mean? He's just, I, I think, much respect to Earl, but I think Earl, he has a power. Uh, But I think compared to Bud, he's too slow. You know, he's more flat-footed, more calm. And, I, and you know. I think Bud will bring out the better in me because he moves more. And Bud's a thinking fighter. He, 
he won't do the same thing all the time and all the time. On look when he fought Sean Porter. Oh, you you see that uppercut he threw going back? That that was crazy, man. Uh, so I feel like Bud will give me way more work, and he's a better fighter. So that's somebody I would look forward to fighting or even sparring. Mm. Well, I think that is all our questions. Danny, do you have any more? I'm refreshing here uh, in case I got any last minute. Nope, I think we got them all, champ. All right. Um, let's take this quick intermission and take this picture with Freudis Rojas, a.k.a. Freddy, trained by K. Caroma. And my and father. His fa- What's yeah. your father's name? The same. I'm the junior. Freddy's oh. the same. He's a senior. Okay. I'm junior, too. Shout out. Mm. All right. We're going to take this intermission. Take this picture. We'll be right back. What up, YouTube family? Don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Help us get to that million subscribers. We're on the road to a million. And obviously, we have other great content on our Patreon channel. So since this video is over, head on over to our Patreon and check out all the exclusive content or right here on our YouTube members.